time for your weekly Bible quiz. Y'all ready? Jesus said, I am the what, and you are the what? That's easy. She just read it. I'm the vine, you are the branches. This was the seventh I am saying. If you want it in the predicate nominative, predicate nominative form. But we won't worry about that. But when else did Jesus say I am something? He said seven other six other times. What were they? Almost just last week, I am the the good shepherd, the way, the truth, and the life. We got somebody got another one out there. What else? I am the the what? No, he didn't say that. He did say that, but not in that form. It's when he was. Anybody else know any of them? I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, the life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And now I am the vine. Something different about this one, though. He says, I'm the vine, and you are what? The branches. Never told us what we were before. He's the door for the sheep, and we're the sheep, I guess. But he doesn't say you're the sheep. I'm the shepherd. But he says he's the shepherd. But here he says you're the branches. What does that mean, to be the branches on the vine? And who's the vine tender, the vine grower? God. Jesus is saying something very different here for us to listen to, that we're supposed to take the word and spread and spread and spread and spread like greenbrier. Spread, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, so that the whole world might know. But this is a tough passage. These are two tough passages together. Let's look for a minute at the epistle lesson. We love because he first loved us. We can get real cheesy about love, can't we? Oh, I love you, schmaltzy. I love you so much. I love God. God is love. But if you think about what that means, what does it mean that God is love? What does that mean about love? Love is a power. Love is a force. Love is something very concrete, very much like God. Love seeks the good of the other. Love seeks the peace of the world. Love's got power behind it. It's not anything wimpy. Say, I love you. Does that mean anything other than I wish you well, I wish you prosperity and peace, shalom, wholeness, all those completeness, those things that Jesus Christ brings with his peace. So, what does it mean to say, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as we so are in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. This is why I picked this lesson for my own wedding. I was 42 when I got married. There was plenty to be scared about. I've been married before. I thought, no, perfect love casts out fear. People told me all along, they said, what are you going to do? You're marrying this big old West Virginia boy. And I hadn't been scared until people told me I should be scared, but it was like one day he didn't live there, the next day he did. We had a beautiful life together. Because perfect love just chases fear away. But there's a lot to be afraid of in this world, isn't there? If we stop and we let ourselves go, we'll be afraid of the things that happen. We'll be afraid of the miseries that we see around us. We'll be afraid of poverty. We'll be afraid of people's depression and fears and everything else. There's plenty to be afraid of, but if we love others perfectly as God has loved us, we can ask God for anything we want and we'll get it. Doesn't mean you can ask God for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich during worship if you're hungry or a pony or things like that. It's not about wishing, but it's about saying to God, what I want is your world, and God will grant you the ability to make God's world real for others. So an incredible gift we've been given to love God and have God love us. But my father's the vine grower. He ruins every branch that bears no fruit. This was a passage when I was on the Board of Ordained Ministry. I was the head of Biblical Skills Review. Everybody had to turn in a Bible study, and they had to pick from four passages, one Old Testament, one New Testament, one Epistle, one Psalm, and this was the Gospel for several years. People would pick it, and we let them pick everything. We said, where are you going to teach it? Who are you going to teach? And I always said, I'm going to teach children, and I want to teach youth. And they'd say, God loves you. Stay connected to God, which is basically what it says. I said, what about that judgmental passage in there about any branch that does not bear fruit is going to cut off through the fire? They'd say, I'm not going to deal with that. We got to deal with that, don't we? But I think what it is is not that we're going to be cut off. I think it's more cut it out. Have you ever said that to your child, cut it out? 
or your spouse cut it out. What does it mean to cut it out? Stop it. There's a sign that's this. Finish, finish, finish. It means cut it out. If you have the right facial expression, it means cut it out now. When I did deaf ministry, when I did camp with deaf kids, we would be there at first before we took over the whole camp. There would be half hearing kids, half deaf kids. And some of the hearing pastors that I knew very well would say to me, gosh, those kids must hate you. I said, why? They said, you look so mean all the time when you're going, cut it out, cut it out, cut it out. He smiled and said, cut it out. They're going to walk all over you. Little boys running by, I saw him and said, am I mean? He's like, get out of here. You're funny. And ran off. Because you got to say, cut it out, right? How many of you ever said, cut it out to your kid? What did they do that made them? Clark, your father's never said, cut it out to you, has he? Maybe, maybe he has. Can you think of an example there, Dad? When they're fighting back and forth, you say, cut it out. When do you say it? Toby, you've got three boys at home. Have you ever said, cut it out to your boys? Not an expression that you use, but you told them to stop their behavior at some point, maybe? Probably. Probably. Anybody have a clear example come to mind when you said, cut it out to your child? Or children, when they talk back, cut it out. My mother said, cut it out to me so many times, I can't remember all the reasons she did. She said it to me when I was her pastor in this congregation, she said, cut that out. She would tell me some days, don't wear that skirt again, it's too short. I'm like, thanks, Mom. One day she said that to me in the narthex with a lot of people around, don't wear that skirt again. I'm like, it's already on, Mom, I can't do anything. About it right now, she said, cut it out, cut it out. So what do we have to cut out of our own lives? This is a self-pruning example. God will prune us. But we've got to take the shears ourselves and cut some things out. What are the things we need to cut out? Just yell them out. What are the things you need to cut out of your life sometimes? Negativity. Anger. Holding grudges. Amen. Amen, amen. If anything's going to kill a congregation, it's holding grudges. What else? Desire for retaliation, amen to that. What else do you have to cut out of your life? Fear. Fear. What else? Judging. Judging. Oh, amen to that one. If we judge each other, we're going to just be lost, aren't we? You can't say to somebody else, I'm going to prune you back because you need to be pruned. That doesn't work, does it? I can't tell you the number of times people have said to me, you'd be so pretty if you just lost some weight. I'm like, Wow, I never thought of that, you know? Wow, my knees wouldn't hurt if I lost some weight. You think? You think, you think, you think? It doesn't put them on my Christmas card list, I'll tell you that right now. But if I were to change my ways and decide myself, that's a different story, right? How many of you have ever felt judged by somebody else? Does it feel good to be judged by somebody else? No, it doesn't, but if you ask God to connect you with the Spirit you're going to grow like a weed. You're going to grow like a vine. Anybody know what kudzu is? There's not kudzu in this area, is there? There is? How about multifloral rose? That's another big one. We need Toby up here to talk about these things today. Greenbrier, multifloral rose, and kudzu. If you go to the south, kudzu is brought here from Asia, right? Because it's a great cattle feed if you keep it under control. What happens when you let it go? There are entire houses that are encapsulated in kudzu in the south. Multifloral rose is used in Japan, I think, particularly as a hedge. But you got to trim it. If you don't trim it, what's going to happen? It's going to spread and go wild. You all know multifloral rose, whether you know you know it or not, because it's everywhere. But you got to trim yourself, or you're going to just overpower everybody else in the room sometimes, it looks like. But if you let other people just judge you, then you're going to be a mess. I'm telling you that right now. You will be a mess if you just go with everybody else's decisions about what needs to be trimmed from your life. But what you need to do is connect yourself to God in an inextricable way. You've got to be the peanut butter to God's jelly or the jelly to God's peanut butter, depending on which is stronger in your sandwich. you got to be the pantyhose to God's green briar. you got to be what sticks you to God inextricably because if you stay connected to God, your life is going to be different. I can promise you that. There have been times in my life when I felt far from God, and those are the times that I'm loneliest, times that I hurt the most. But if I turn to God, things change in my life. Let me tell you about what happens when I get up in the morning now. 
have my rollator close to my bed, the other one, the cheap one that doesn't block the brakes like this one does, and I have to get up. I had to put off getting my new bed, which is ordered and paid for already, because I have mold that has to be remediated in my bedroom now. Yay. Another problem. I'm sleeping in the guest room where my mom was, and the bed in there is not very great, and I have trouble getting up in the morning, which is why I got this bed that's going to raise me up in the morning. So when I try to get up, I started saying things to myself that were not very kind, like, get your fat behind off the bed, Terry. And then I'd use words that were not as flattering as that. I'm being honest with you now. I wasn't getting up very well. Now I sit up on the side of the bed, and I say, thank you, God, that I'm awake and alert and sitting up. I say, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by grace on heaven's table land. And then I get up without any trouble, and I thank God for getting me out of bed. So just to change an attitude that made my life a lot better, because I remember that God is with me no matter what I face, no matter how hard it is, no matter how much my leg hurts in the morning, I can get up and move. Well, now it seems that I have celiac disease, possibly, and maybe even lactose intolerance. So I got another round of tests to go. And that's a little sad for me because, I mean, you can't eat much if you can't eat lactose. And you, I mean, that gets rid of the ice cream, which I turned to when I got off the gluten. Oy. But um, God's going to get me through whatever I have to face. God will be with me. So I want you to think about how you're connected to God, where you feel most connected, where you feel most distant, and let God have those things and say, cut it out. Lord, cut it out of me. Lord, help me to abide in you, and I will be who you want me to be. Because God is the door for the sheep. God is the good shepherd. God is the living bread. God is the way, the truth, the life. God is the resurrection and the life. God is the light of the world. And God is the vine, and we're the branches. Jesus is the vine, because Jesus is God, and we're the branches. And God will prune us where we need to be pruned, so we might grow to God's glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Would you please stand now and sing the great song of love? They'll know we're Christians by our love from the faith we sing number 2223.